Welcome to today's episode. Today's an easy day of riding, just 1,500 meters of elevation and a couple of mountains to go over. <laughs> so we're gonna be taking a look at Chris's bicycle and his setup and how he's not carrying any stuff at all. Spoilers, I'm carrying all of his stuff. So this is the bike I've been riding since we left nine, ten days ago. Uh, it's a Cervelo Caledonia 5, not named anything to do with Scotland. It's actually named after the road that Cervelo's office used to be in, or on, in, in California. And it was a bike that was designed for rough roads around there. And so the road was called Caledonia Road, they named it after that road. This is a bike that Cervelo designed specifically for Roubaix, Flanders, like the Cobble Classics in mind. So slightly longer wheelbase, slightly lower bottom bracket. Uh, the idea is it's supposed to be a more stable, endurance focused bike. They do two versions. They do the five version, which is like the top end or the Caledonia, which is a more uh, price conscious version of it. So mine is built up with a mix of Ultegra Di2 11 speed. Uh, with a Dura-Ace uh, power meter on there. I'm running a semi-compact chain ring on the front and an 1134 cassette on the back. So loads of room with the gears there basically. It's easy to sort of spin up any of the climbs with a loaded bike. Definitely uh, more gears than me. Definitely have more gears than you. And also I, that's the kind of range I quite like. I like having the bigger cassette and then the semi-compact because I don't know, I just think it works really nicely. You don't need to have a, uh, you know, anything else. It kind of seems to cover all the ranges. Fine off-road, fine on-road. Wheels are from Parkours. I'm actually riding the outer wheels, which is Parkours gravel rim, which is a much wider rim. I've got 28 mil tires on there, but on the outer rim, they blow up probably to a 30 or 32, much bigger. Front wheel also has a dynamo hub on it, which is not connected. Uh, but it's very easy to connect. I've not connected it because we don't. I don't feel the need of it on this kind of ride, to be honest with you. Uh, but the, I've got the ability to do that quite easily. Saddle is a pro stealth off-road saddle. Now, very specifically riding the off-road one because it's deeper padding. It's a bit more comfortable, in my opinion. Uh, the, the stealth saddle is a saddle I get on really well with, but it's the same sort of thing as so many saddles out there. It's, you know, shorter saddle, pressure relief channel in the middle. You know what I find funny about the saddle? The off-road saddle. Yeah. Is that it's got a pressure relief channel, but they've like filled it in so you don't get sprayed in the ass. I ride quite a long stem and quite narrow handlebars. Reason being is I've got long limbs and a short torso. So for me, it's more comfortable. That is how I've had my bikes fitted to me. Luckily, it looks kind of pro and cool. I do have spaces underneath it, but I have that on every bike. But what Cervelo have done is they've kind of like done this integrated spacer top cap thing, which looks really neat and tidy keeps it, I guess, kind of looking a bit aero. And it actually doesn't really look like you have spaces on it, which is quite nice. All the cabling is run internally. The handlebars themselves have a channel in them. So the, the cables aren't actually internal of the bars. They just sit in the channel. So it's actually quite easy to service and show stuff around. The cables do then run internally uh, through the stem and down into the steerer where the steerer tube on this bike is a D shape. And that's how the cables run through it. I'm running a 130 stem and a 38 handlebar. I find the handlebars super comfortable. The Garmin that I'm using is a 1030 plus, which is the big one, big battery life, big screen. To be honest, that's why I like it. You can charge it up with the external battery, which is super useful, which you could do with most, I think most of the Garmin's now that have the little magnetic. Yeah, when they've got that stuff on the back. The connector thing on them. Uh, the mount, a lot of people ask about the mount. The mount with the light on the bottom is Cervelo's own mounting system, which uses a GoPro mount. It works great, super tidy. On the rear, I'm then using tail fin aero pack. My one has seen many, many rides, races. It, it's well used. It's done Badlands, Atlas Mountain Race, riding across Australia, this trip, uh, some other big like, bike packing track trips I've done as well. I like it because it's just, it doesn't sway, super convenient. Everything stays sturdy and in one place. The thing with a lot of, I guess, saddle bags is because of how they're mounted through the seat post and then on the, on the saddle rails, they tend to sway. But because you've got the, the rack, which goes through your through axle, it's super stable, doesn't move around. The side bag that's on it is something that I'm testing for tail fin 
Can't say much more than that at the moment, um, but it's very good. Your tail fin doesn't have the fitting on the side that lets you fit panniers at all. No, so my tail fin is the, I guess the lightest version they do, which doesn't have the fittings on the side. It's just a carbon rack that goes around it. A lot of people have asked how have I carried so little stuff. So basically just to give a breakdown of what I have in the bike, it's a set of kit, two pairs of boxers, a pair of shorts, two t-shirts, uh, down jacket, rain jacket, leg warmers, overshoes, charging stuff, toiletries, electric toothbrush, which is my essential that I always take on trips with me. And I think that's about it in there. You could make that lighter, 100%, you could take less. But I've, that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's kind of like, I've got lots of things in there which are added bonus for me. Uh, inside the frame bag, which is a custom made frame bag from a couple of years ago, I've basically got food and like gels and uh, powders from Sturka and some like passport, a bike lock, some tools, that kind of stuff. There seems to be a fair few people in the comments kind of shocked at how little stuff that you have in particular. I really don't think, and I'd like to get across in these videos how you don't need that much stuff yeah. when you're doing a trip like this. In fact, even with kit, we both have two sets of kit with us. This morning we were wondering why. If you have one set of kit, you can wash it and dry it every single night and it'll be completely fine. Um, so just, yeah, less is more. You could do this setup, like what I've got, that, that is what I would say is a large sort of scale setup. For an ultra race, I, to be honest, if I was doing an ultra race, I'd probably be using something very similar, but a full frame bag just to give a bit more storage. And you can you can strip it right back. Like on an Ultra, one jersey, two pairs of bibs, so you can swap bibs, and then you don't really need off-bike stuff. Something that is in that saddlebag that I haven't mentioned is the shoes. I have large feet, and I if I put any shoes, normal shoes, on any bikepacking trip, they take up the bag. So what I do is I, I bought these, they're called uh, wading shoes, or rock pool shoes, which are about a fiver on, online. You can buy pretty much anywhere. I will insert a clip here. Boop. and they roll up like a little tube about that big so for me it's perfect it's so i'm not in bike shoes when i'm walking around the other thing to mention is the little thing that people keep asking which is on my just above the rear stays that is a little musette bag which is just strapped to there super lightweight means that if we stop somewhere and i want to carry some food i could do it quite easily spd sl pedals the road ones I would normally say on a trip like this to use mountain bike shoes and mountain bike pedals, but the reason why I haven't is I, I have a lot of foot issues uh, and I've basically gone down the route of going with the shoes that work best for me. I think it's fair to say that both of us wish we had off-road shoes on this trip. The only reason I'm riding road shoes is because of the stuff with Team Ribble after this trip, because uh, I wanted the lightest shoes possible for that. In usual circumstances, off-road shoes means you can walk about and you don't mess up your cleats when you uh, inevitably hit the gravel sections. So another thing that people have been asking about is how do you protect the frame, the bike, when the you're bags using on bags on it. So what I do is uh, I buy Gorilla Tape. Uh, they do like a clear single-sided tape. They do tons of different versions, but a Gorilla Tape, the clear tape, and what I specifically do, because it's really sticky, is I'll stick it like on my trousers to take some of the stick off, and then put it on the frame to protect the frame where your straps go. So you can't, because it's a clear tape, you can't really see it unless you get close to it. But it just means that the, the points of contact of your bags, specifically that frame bag, aren't gonna rub on the frame, rub the paint job off. When you finish your trip, you just take it all off and it's easy. Because you've taken a bit of the stick off it, it comes off really easy as well. The reason why Gorilla Tape is because it's thick. I have an Aspero 5, which is Cervelo's gravel bike. A lot of people have asked how it compares. And the, the difference is very much in the geometry of the bike. The, the Caledonia and Caledonia 5 is probably the bike that suits 90% of people. Uh, it's a more relaxed geometry. It's longer wheelbase, uh, lower bottom bracket, so it's much more stable. Designed to be comfortable, due to the carbon layup and having the drop rear stays and stuff. But the difference really between the two of them is, I would say, fundamentally is the tire clearance. And the Aspero 5 is a bit more of an aggressive bike. It's a longer top tube. So for me, on the gravel bike, as opposed to the road bike, I ride a shorter stem to balance out the fact that it's got a longer top tube. The reason why I rode this as opposed to the Aspero 5 was because it is a bike which is designed for doing multi-day rides, really. That's one of the things they designed it for. So it seemed perfect to test it for that kind of thing. And been super impressed, really impressed. I, I keep telling you, I really like it. And it's grey. And it's grey too. That ended things quite quickly, didn't it? Well, luckily we got it all done.
got a lot of cars. There's 25 in there. Count them already. Should we go? 